before we get started with the deck profile, guys, I just want to say thank you. Uh, I actually have finally reached 20,000 subscribers here on YouTube. It has taken a really long time, and I am just absolutely, like, speechless. For those of you that don't know, for those of you that have been following me, this channel has been around since 2011. I know that's a really long time for a YouTube channel. And by a lot of people's standards, 20,000 may not be a lot, especially for the, especially the way channels are growing these days. But for those of you who have been following me since the Slim X Team Symmetry days, maybe even the Slim X Team Purple Panda days, you basically have been with me on this journey of, I guess, kind of like finding myself, like finding my place in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community. I've gone through a lot. There was a time where it was during 2014 and all of 2015, I completely walked away from the channel, basically walked away from Yu-Gi-Oh! I turned my back on the game that I love for stupid reasons, but through that process, through that nightmare, I actually came out a stronger person. I learned a lot about myself, and I am in, obviously, a much better place. I feel that after all this time, I've gotten my spark back. I have gone to so many events, I have collaborated with a lot of channels, I have done a lot of content, I have gotten better as a player, better as a content creator, everything. And all I can say is thank you. Thank you for putting up with me, thank you for supporting me, thank you for, you know, providing me with awesome feedback, awesome criticisms, you know, and giving me the ability to learn, learn from my mistakes, learn from you guys, learn from other channels, learn how to, you know, be a better content creator, be a better player, and provide you guys with the best content that I can, the most honest content that I can. It's crazy to me to think that we hit 20,000. This is a number I had wanted so long ago, like so long ago, you guys, like back in like 2013, 2014, I was thinking about reaching 20,000 and it took this long. I had to go through a huge period of where every time I would upload, I would lose subscribers. I could never keep a consistent subscriber count. And over time, just being consistent and grinding and talking about the things I used to talk about. If you guys remember the three keys to, you know, to, um, Successful Yugi tubing, consistency, um, commitment, and um, I guess it was like compassion. There was like some other things too. It's been a long time, like forgive me, but it's taken a really long time, but I am so happy to be here at this point with this channel. And this is only the beginning, you guys. This is only the beginning. This is just the tip of the iceberg. And I'm really here to, you know, just keep pushing out content for you guys. Go to as many events as I can, just get better as a player. And all I can say is thank you. Thank you to all the channels that have helped me. Thank you to my brother Sam, Team X Samurai, uh, Samurai One, uh, to my brother Johnny, you already know, Asian Persuasion, uh, to Simo, to Doug, to John, to uh, Cordero, to every YouTube channel that's ever helped me, ever inspired me, ever, you know, shown me, you know, tricks, uh, tricks of the trade, like ways to learn, Farfa, etc. All of you. Thank you all. Thank you all. You probably don't know it, but you guys inspire me. You guys inspired me to not give up and to come back and to just put in the most effort I could into this channel. And so far it's paying off and I couldn't be happier. But anyways, I know that this is a long intro. You guys, feel free to skip it if you want. We're going to get into the deck profile, my updated Alter Guys deck profile for the December 2018 format in this uh, new ban list. Uh, yeah, we're going to get into it, but I just wanted to say thank you guys. It means the world to me. I love you all, and I hope you guys enjoy the deck profile. What's up, you guys? All right, you guys. For those of you that stayed for the intro, shout out to you. I just wanted to say thank you. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I know it took a little while, but here's the deck profile, you guys. I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Uh, this is my updated Altergeist list for the uh, new format. One thing I'm going to say is I did not include any cherries targets in the main deck, in the main uh, extra deck. However, uh, I'm going to show you guys afterwards like all the options you have available to you uh, to use cherries in the deck. I feel this is definitely one of the best decks for using cherries in the side decks. So we'll get into that. But I wanted to show you guys like a pretty, uh, like just basic, generic uh, extra deck with all the possible options Ultra guys can make even though they rarely go into the extra deck but I'm not going to explain too many things a lot of this stuff should be standard uh, like I said it's very similar to my Pasadena list but we'll get into it so three marionetter self-explanatory one of the best cards in the deck three multi-faker the best card in the deck 
Three Mulliseek, probably the second best card in the deck, if not the first best. This removal effect is insane. Um, like I said, I don't really need to explain these cards, but you should know how they work. Marionetter sets your trap. Multi-Faker chains off the trap, brings out uh, Siliquitus, and Mulliseek searches when it goes to grave, and it uh, uh, sends a card to the grave. And then the two Siliquitus, this is your Kirin. And then I will always play the one Kankiri. I know a lot of people don't like this card. It's hard for me to understand why. Like I, can, I guess, for the most part, I can get like, oh, okay, it doesn't really do anything by itself, but when you have it in conjunction, like you can open this, and this looks like a crap hand, but if you literally have this, and you can just special this, you can just keep bouncing to like save your life points and like save you from attacks and negate monsters. So I think it's all, and I think it's standard. Those 12 Ultra Geist monsters, they never change. There's no reason for them to change. They're all good. They're all strong, and I don't feel you should ever... Uh, Increase or lower the amount like don't play more than one can carry don't play more than uh, two siliquitous But I mean uh, to me, that's what I feel is the best ratios uh, And the only hand trap the main hand, tra hand trap is the three ash uh, as far as like monster hand traps go and then I might as well put them down now But of course I'm playing the three impermanents uh, You have to play this card in this deck uh, This is like without a doubt the deck that utilizes this the most impermanence faker is insane a lot of times It's just game uh, if any deck can play this card like to its full potential. It's alter geist I know this card is expensive Unfortunately, I feel like if you're going to play a competitive build of alter geist you need this card if you're not playing this card and you're playing a more casual build, you can play something like Lost Wind. But to be honest, I feel Impermanence is just the superior card. So that's uh, self-explanatory. That's uh, for the monsters, uh, the hand traps, the spells. I, I still play the same four. Uh, two Desires and only two Village. Uh, desires is self-explanatory. I want to draw two cards. As long as you don't banish all copies of one Altergeist monster, you're able to play. Mathematically, it shouldn't really happen. Uh, there were times I wanted, uh, I was going to play a third Desire, so I would see it more, but two was fine. And I only play the two Village because just like la the, the last build, uh, I play the two Village with uh, the one copy of Metaverse. You have to play this card in your deck. I go back and forth whether I want to put a third village and still keep the metaverse or whatnot, but this card is your win button against Striker. This card will literally win you the games against Striker. Uh, when I played this deck at Pasadena, I did lose to one Striker as my teammate Tristan. I bricked game three, but I can tell you right now from the other two Strikers I played, I won my game solely because of this card. Like Just having this card in a Marionette is enough to win the game. You have so many traps to control what they do. When they try to make Hayate, you know, trying to get smart, trying to get stuff in the grave, trying to play around village or they try or whatever they did go clara and you just strike it like the game's over they can't do anything and this card is just insane so definitely uh i feel if you're gonna play alter guys's format you have to play village i honestly feel it has to be in the main deck like people can say oh i'll side it no you should play it in the main deck i feel the card is insane it's so good across the board against so many decks like it's not just for striker like this card literally shuts down thunder dragons it shuts down um you know, just a lot of decks that play spell cards. And it's it's even good against the Warrior and all those other decks. Because if they don't get spell casters, I don't even know if they play spell casters. Like, this at least cuts them off from their power cards. So, this card's really good. I feel it's a staple now in Altergeist. Uh, the rest of the deck, you guys, is traps. You shouldn't be surprised. This is a stun deck. This is a control deck. This is a trap deck. Three strike. Card's insane. So good against striker. Whenever they make their Kagari or whatever, you just strike it. They don't get Ray. They lose. Three spoofing. Uh, this card is coming hollow. I can't wait for the OTS pack uh, to be released to upgrade this uh, to a uh, super rare. I think it's going to look awesome to match the protocol and manifestation. This card is the nuts. It's like the best card in the deck. Well, one of the best cards in the deck, being able to just shuffle back from your hand or on the field. You're able to dodge a lot of things with this card. Only downside, this card gets ashed. It hurts because you have to return as cost, but this card is insane and you have to play three. I, I couldn't understand those builds that were only playing two. Like People are like, oh, you might brick on it. I feel like as long as you're seeing spoofing, it's not a brick. Like, like you need this card in your deck. You need to see this card uh, when you're starting your uh, your plays. I still opted to play the three Mind Crush. Now the three Mind Crush, I go back and forth. I have mixed results with them. I feel the card's really good, like post game one, because you know obviously you know what your opponent's playing, and you know you usually want it for evenly matched. That's why this card was so strong. However. The things I realized about this card that I kind of knew but I kind of ignored, which was kind of ignorant on my part, was that since you are a Siliquitous bouncing a monster, if it's not an extra deck monster, your Mind Crush is always live. There was one play I did at the YCS where I spun back a monster. Oh, I spun back a Thunder Dragon card, Mind Crushed it, Chain Multi Faker, and the game was over. This card has a lot of applications against um, just any deck that searches and every deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! searches. So 
as as bad as this card is going second, I still feel it's really strong. And there are all the are those games where you're able to mind crush, double engage, going second, and it's like game ending. So, I feel the card is still good. Um, if you don't play that, I'm not really sure what else you could play. Again, I brought up Lost Wind. I thought that was kind of a cool card. Uh, there weren't really a lot of other cards I'd want to play except possibly the Trap Trick build. This is not the Trap Trick build. The this is just the standard Alter Guys build. As much as I like Trap Trick, I'm not sure if it's really the route I personally want to go for the deck. But you can play, you know, of course, whatever you want. The uh, rest of the traps, two protocol and one manifestation. I've kept this ratio. I've opted of thinking of maybe going to a second manifestation, possibly cutting a mind crush, but so far this has been fine. Like, yeah, you don't want to banish the soft desires, but I mean, it's desires, you guys. Like, we know it's a high risk, high reward card, so you you run that risk. But uh, this ratio has been fine for me. A uh, protocol is the nuts. Uh, being able to negate Ray and Grave is insane. That's how you win the striker matchup, like hands down. That's how I won my striker matchups. Just negating the Ray and Grave after I got rid of the the Link monster is how you win. So card is insane. Place your alter guys monsters can't be uh, negated. Uh, two copies of Storm Duster. Uh, I like this card still. Uh, Strikers is still a deck. I feel this card has applications pretty much, you know, across the board. If any deck is playing Dangers, they're gonna set their like spells first, and then you just hit them because you know, like the minute they start setting stuff, you know it's important for them to resolve their Dangers, and you can just Storm Duster them, blow them out. Duster plus Faker a lot of times against Striker is game. So I feel this card is just standard in the deck now. Uh, I don't know if I'd play three in the main, but it's still good uh, at least at two. You can always side the third. Then I play Warning, Judgment, Order, and the one copy of Metaverse. The one copy of Metaverse is in place of the third village. I like this card because it triggers multi-faker. That's like the main reason. Uh, I know hard drawing village is really strong, but a lot of times if you open two, it kind of sucks. However, if you open a Metaverse and a village, it gives you the option to where if somehow they deal with your village on field and you have this, you can just activate it and then you can just set another, you can just activate another village from your deck. So I like the versatility and I definitely think you guys should check that, should try that card out in the deck. Order needs no explanation this card is your win button against strikers and just good against a lot of decks and then as you notice i'm playing all five solemns i feel this is the best way to play the deck the, these cards literally just say no to everything they red reboot you you solemn judgment it you can win the game so this card's insane i solemn judgment at a red reboot and it was game so like literally that was his best play he couldn't push past all my traps and i just won so that uh was pretty standard there but yeah that is the main deck you guys it is 40 cards now to the extra deck. Now remember, I am not playing any Cherries targets in the main deck because I wanted to show you guys the most like basic approach you can take and I'll show you like how we could change the deck the extra deck to incorporate the Cherries targets. But I'm going to tell you to be honest right now, these are the only cards you're going to make. Like hands down. You're not going to make anything else but Hexia and Link Karibo and if you are, you are in a weird situation to begin with. Uh, the nine rounds of Swiss I played, the games I played beforehand to practice, I didn't make anything but Hexia and Link Karibo. There was no need to. It was just enough to win. Uh, these cards are just the best. Like, these are literally the best. Like, Mola seeking a Link Karibo and a Search Multifaker into Go, Go, Go is just how the deck is played. Hexia is insane. Negating stuff is insane. Its floatability is insane. Uh, a lot of times you want to just be able to get a Hextia and, like, another Hextia and then have the Hextia point to a Marionette. That's, like, the 7,700 damage combo. Then you just need one more monster to end the game. So... Uh, these are just all very standard. Uh, never play less than three Hexia. That's my best advice. Now, th these are just a bunch of cards you have the, the potential to make, and I'll explain like all their applications. I'm sure you've seen all these before, but for those of you that haven't, Clara and Rushka, this is because it's another spellcaster. Uh, if you do get hit by rivalry for whatever reason, we do side rivalry. I like rivalry a lot uh, because it's good against a lot of the combo decks and decks that, you know, rely on multiple types. So this is just really solid and you need to be able to play under rivalry. So this is your one way to play under rivalry. Again, when strikers try to go to this and you strike it or warning it or judgment it, the game's over. So the card's really good. The card I didn't play at Pasadena, but I missed it, was We Witch's Apprentice. The reason why I play this card is it's an out to Inspector border. If you have Link Karibo plus Multi Faker, you make this, and then it lowers the um, attack of the border to 16, and this is at 19. You just punch over it, so this is really solid. Plus, if it goes to the grave, you retrieve back a Dark Monster, so you can add back Multi Faker, so that's pretty strong. Uh, Nightmares, uh, Standard, Cerebus, Phoenix, and a Unicorn. Um, like I said, you're probably not going to make these. You might make Phoenix. Uh, did I make Phoenix? I, I might have made Phoenix. I kind of look at it like I, I never make Cerebus. Like, don't ask me why. Like, I never make Cerebus. But I'll talk about these real quick. So, Phoenix, a lot of times, like, if I do make it, I feel like I'm going to make it, and then I'm going to use it to link into Unicorn, because that, that's just how I feel it works. So, you want as many, uh, like, toolboxy cards as possible, and I feel the Nightmares are the best cards. 
uh, one ningirisu it's just an out to problematic cards that you can't uh, target non targeting uh, removal is great uh, it's pretty easy to make too in this deck because like you can have a hexia and you can make something else hexia link Kribo or something like that and you just make this so it may not come up like that many games but you want as many options in your uh, extra deck as possible I put this in here, like I said, I was just trying to play like standard cards. I put Bania in there just because for time. Now I know what you guys are thinking, oh crap, it'll just blow up all the spells and traps on the field. However, like, I'm just trying to do it for the mirror. I'm just trying to blow out my opponent and then this is for time. This will just, they'll take 500 per card, so... Uh, that was the reason behind that, so you can play that if you want. I, I personally did not play it at Pasadena. I didn't miss it, but I wanted to, again, give you guys the most versatile cards that you can make in this deck. And then uh, Prim Banshee is there for Ultimate Falcon if you end up playing against Waking the Dragon. That's how you out it. This in Hexia, so... Or, uh, yeah, that in Hexia, that in uh, Marionette or something like that. I put Triple Burst in there. Just being able to negate Ray is huge. Like, what more can I say? Like, my whole game plan against Striker is negate Ray and you win, so... That's basically how I play how I play I play that match because Ray's floating ability is so annoying. So this card gets it takes care of it to where you can negate it. Ray doesn't float, and then I rounded it out with the two Bortles. Shout out to Bortle, <laughs> the two Bortles. So, like I said in my Pasadena profile, you just want these. You just want them. They're, like you want the option. Boral load is still an insane card. Like people who just don't play Boral load, I, I don't understand. This card is still the nuts. I know that Boral Sword is an OTK card. This is almost an OTK by itself. A lot of times your opponent can't make another Boral load. Can't make a Boral load of their own, or they don't have an out to this. You just win the game. You take their monster. You win the game. So, I wanted to have every option possible. So that is it for the extra deck. Now, these are the cool options you guys have available to you. You're playing against Cyber Dragons. Just saying you are. You make them go first because they're a going second deck. Make them go first. They make their board. You're like, cool. Okay. On your turn, you draw. You contact because their Seeger is a Cyber Dragon. You make this. You out their board. You win. Pretty cool. Dante, because I will always respect this deck. This deck does not die. This this card does not die. This deck does not die. It doesn't go anywhere. I respected this in Pasadena, and I put it in my extra deck, and I'm glad I did, even though I didn't play against it. Hydrolander BA is still going to be a deck. Uh, best believe. Like I said, if Thomas Rose makes a build, people will play it. This is here. Personally, I don't think Cherries is good against, against this deck. I've... I've argued with people. I feel it's not that good because they can just chain Ray, but I mean, I guess. I mean, if for some reason the game escalates to when you get the token, to where they go token and then you cherries, but I mean, God, I mean, if that's really how the game played out, you were probably going to win anyway. So take this one with a grain of salt, but if you're going to cherries a striker card, uh, cherries the best one. Respect spirals. I know the firewall's gone, but. Spirals was a hell of a deck back in the day. That's why I have this here. I just want to present to you guys like all the options I could think of. So, yeah, this is another option to uh, never neglect uh, Spirals just, just in case. The number one Cherry's target, without a doubt, is this guy, Azold. So good against hitting the Rombo deck, hitting the Gumblar deck. And we have Gumblar in here too, but this starts the whole combo. I'd rather just cherries this bitch and have it over with. So they have to have like two extenders to be able to keep going. So if I can cherries that, I'm going to cherries that. That's self-explanatory. I put this here too. This is another option, honestly. This is only if your game progresses to the point where you can cherries a second time. I don't think cher cherriesing this is correct. I feel as old is just better, but I want to present the options to you now that Europe is going to have this card. I don't think it's a good cherries target, but you never know. Like I said, if for some reason you just are so far ahead and you cherries this and cherries this, I mean, I just don't see how they win, but I'm just giving you guys all the options. This thing too, because fuck this card. This is going to be the next card that you see me tossing in a video, but yeah, this card needs to get banned. Screw this card. Lose your hand. Um, like I said, you want to cherries the Azold. If you can't cherries the Azold for whatever reason or you don't have an Azold, even though it's going to be reprinted, cherries this thing. No one wants to lose their hand. Fuck this card. <laughs> And lastly, I have the, the Ultimate Falcon. This isn't a Cherry's target, but this is if you decide to play Waking the Dragon as it is a trap. It does bring this out. I feel this is the best card. I know you can play cards like Last Warrior and uh, Asterio. I just think this card's better, so that's why Falcon is in there. But that is it, you guys. That is the whole deck. That is all the Cherries and Waking the Dragon options, and we'll just go over it one last time, just for those of you that have enjoyed it, but that's my updated Ultra Geist list. It's extremely standard, and that's how I feel you should approach the deck. Don't try to do anything fancy. This deck is very good at what it does. 
Uh, the deck is just a control deck that just really can lock out the opponent. I think it has a very good striker matchup. I will admit, I feel like without Village, its striker matchup is a lot weaker, but the fact that you can main Village so successfully is the reason why you'll win against that deck, so always remember that. And I feel like people just need to respect this deck. This is definitely one of the best decks of the format. This is a deck you will definitely see and a deck you should definitely side for. Even though people are siding Twister and Evenly Match and Reboot, don't feel you can't play this deck. If you play smart, you can still, you know, win. You can still play around those cards, and you can anticipate those cards. Like I said, Mind Crush is a hell of a card. But that is the deck, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, thank you guys for all your continued support and love. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts and any suggestions in the comments below, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.